And welcome back to Reliable Sources. I'm Frank Sesno. Our guest right now as we talk about the media and the crisis in Syria, Shibli Talhami, Len Downey, and Tara Sonnenschein. Folks, here's what you see if you go on to, or you saw anyway, if you went on to Huffington Post not very long ago about President Obama and Syria. Can he make the case? And just underneath, full court press, interviews with six anchors coming on Monday. Len Downey, what's the President of the United States trying to do here? Well, he's clearly trying an uphill battle to convince the Congress and the American people uh, that this strike would be not only a good idea, but I think uh, he's trying to make the moral case for it. That's why these videos are being shown. That's why he's going to... He very rarely speaks to the nation. Through the media, Tara Sonnenschein, six anchor interviews, a full court press, some of these videos and this information coming from the government. Is this information or is this propaganda? You know, for a long time, so many of us have argued we need a vigorous public discourse around foreign policy and global engagement. So for many of us, we are happy that we are now engaged in a public debate, a public discussion about two issues. What do we want to be doing in the world and do we want to actively shape global events? I think what the president is doing is bringing the global foreign policy home so that it is not such a foreign issue. This is about our security. Well, let me ask you this question. Six network anchors going, I mean, is that yesterday's news? It, once upon a time, if a president of the United States had done that, he would have reached all the people in the country. Now, I don't want to say it's inconsequential because he will reach millions and millions. But, but in new tweet. media. Yeah. Everyone will tweet. Everyone will have their blogs. You can, in a sense, Everything is redistributed in multi-platforms. This has also become a vital issue for Americans. I, I think for two reasons. Iraq, you know, the, the worry that we're getting, we're doing that again, that we're, that, that, uh, we're, we're gonna, we're, it's a slippery slope, we're gonna wind up somehow at war in Syria, uh, and, the, and the plight of the people who are gassed. Uh, the opinion polls show Americans are engaged in this news story as they very seldom are for a foreign news story. And I, I think people will be watching. I think the president has to do what he's doing here. How does experience in Iraq, do you think, change the way the media, and the Arab media in particular, will be listening to the president's pitch? Well, substantially. I mean, for one thing, I think one of his problems is people are skeptical about the evidence. I mean, given what happened in Iraq. And the Iraq, media are skeptical about the evidence? I think more I think skeptical than they've been in the past? I, I want to know more, including, by the way, explain to me why Assad used them, because besides being hugely immoral, it's strategically stupid. I need to know what his aim was in addition to that. But also, he has a problem on the moral issue. If it is a moral issue, how is it that the world isn't applauding us internationally? How do you maintain the norms internationally while you're breaking the consensus on international action? Len Downey, at what point do the media go from a healthy skepticism, which in many cases was absent going into the Iraq conflict, Correct. and into an unhealthy suspicion where the president's words are pulled apart unfairly? Well, I, uh, I, think you, I think there's a difference between the world media and the United States media on this, for one thing, because uh, we, we, uh, this is all also taking place against the backdrop of what we know about NSA surveillance. And one of the interesting things in response to your question is they know some things from surveillance here. And the interesting question will be how much will they reveal about what they know about its surveillance of, of, of the decision making going on in Syria? Because they know some of the answers, I think, to but some why, of your questions. Why, as many members of Congress who saw the classified uh, yes. evidence still came out skeptical. But they hadn't yet released declassified videos. I, I want to add one more thing before we lose time. A war-weary nation is one thing. But America also does not like being tagged a weak nation. So I think some of this will get framed around American credibility, which may not have as much drive overseas, but still resonates here. The second is, does politics stop at the water's edge? Do we remember that question? And do we rally around presidents it's, and countries when there is a big issue? I want issue? to say just one thing, because this weak nation is actually one of the themes that comes out of a lot of the media that we've seen in the Middle East. Here's one quote from, um, from a paper we've got, uh, uh, from uh, Al-Shark al-Assad. Al al it's not surprising that Assad continues to commit his crimes against Syria and the Syrians, for Assad's strength stems from Obama's weakness. Uh, that's total nonsense. And let me tell you why. But it's in the Arab media. It's in people one of the media. Are, and again, this is partisan media where some people want to get the U.S. to intervene and others don't. 
But if you look at public opinion, public opinion thinks America is too powerful, that it's meddling in everything, that even when it doesn't act, there's a conspiracy. Uh, when it acts, there's a conspiracy. It's helping the opponents. It's helping the governments. Uh, they've witnessed what America could do in war in Iraq and, and Afghanistan and elsewhere for a decade. And to tell me that they think America is weak is ridiculous. I think the only problem for them or the main problem for them is they don't trust our aims. They think our aims are nefarious, even when we're acting for the, humanitarian the media, reasons. The media reflect the public opinion, which is confused and skeptical. And unfortunately, we're going to have to leave it right there.